What is the difference between acoustic panels and bass traps? Well, there are three main differences. The purpose, the placement, and the design. Generally, acoustic panels and bass traps have a similar purpose, and that's to absorb acoustic energy. However, the bass traps are designed to be more attenuated towards low end, and acoustic panels can be designed to attenuate either just the treble or the treble in mid or the treble mid and bass, depending on the thickness and the density of the acoustic panel. The reason why the bass traps are more attenuated to uh, low end absorption, or I should say one of the reasons, is because of the placement. The placement being uh, typically in a corner. The reason why bass traps are put in corners is because the way low end frequencies respond in a room. So when it comes to treble or uh, upper mid-range frequencies, think about them interacting with the surfaces like a bouncy ball. So if you were to take a bouncy ball into a room and you were to throw it down as hard as you could and it went bow, 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 bouncing all around the room, that's how treble responds when it hits a surface and then reflects throughout the room back and forth. Low end frequencies and, and low mid frequencies react more like water when they hit a surface. So you have these large waves and when they interact and when they hit a wall, they splash out. And that's why the low end frequency tends to build up in the corners. So if you were to walk into a room or like think about this, it's, it's most exaggerated in a gymnasium. If you were to walk into a gymnasium like at your high school dance and you go over to the corner and you're shy and you're standing there, you always hear more bass up against the corner, up against the wall. And why is that? And then when, as you go out towards the center of the floor, you start to hear more of a balanced frequency from the music or sound system that's playing in there. And that's because you're getting that bass buildup happening in the corners. Uh, so what happens is whenever you put a panel in the corner, that helps reduce that effect. Um, ideally, when it comes down to the design, you want to have an air gap. An air gap provides an extra low frequency absorption coefficient to the panel. They've done a lot of studies, and whenever the studies are done to get the frequency absorption coefficient of a specific material, what they'll do is they'll test the panel flush on a wall, and they'll also test the panel 16 inches from the wall. And what we find is that unanimously, whenever a panel has a 16 inch gap from a surface, then it has a lower frequency absorption coefficient than whenever it's flush to a wall. So whenever you have a corner mounted panel, the purpose is to attenuate the frequencies that are building up in that corner and also get that extra air gap to provide an extra low frequency absorption coefficient. Also, when it comes to the design, typically inside of a bass trap, you'll have a denser material than what you'll find in a standard wall absorber, uh, especially a lot denser than, than acoustic foam and typically denser than what's in an acoustic panel. You'll have uh, industry standard bass trap is six pounds per cubic foot compressed. Uh, so if you could imagine what that would be like is if you were uh, getting a piece of fiberglass that was really, really big and compressing it all the way down to something extra, extra, extra dense. That's the material that should be inside of a uh, acoustic bass absorber to give you the most bang for your buck for low end frequency attenuation. Okay, I hope that helps clarify some of the main differences we broke down for the bass traps and, and what exactly that they do. Uh, when it comes to acoustic panels, you can think about them like this. They're designed to go on flat surfaces at various reflection points throughout the room. They can be at your first reflection points, first order reflection points, which would be your side walls or your back wall, second order reflection points. You can have ceiling baffles. They can be placed at wherever you're going to have frequencies 
bouncing around the room, just like I told you in the beginning about how the bouncy ball bounces around anywhere. You want to put your acoustic absorption panels at those different reflection points where you're going to have acoustic energy bouncing around. It'll reduce the reflections in the room, and then that will increase the clarity and intelligibility, uh, the sonic clarity or speech intelligibility that's occurring within the space. Uh, a lot of times what happens is during the reverberation of a sound, uh, let's say you're in, a, for example, a large room and you're talking, it might reverberate for a long period of time. And while that sound's still reverberating, you're having to continue to communicate and you start trying to talk over that reverberation. And that adds to the volume of the space. And then you continue to try to talk over that. And it builds and builds upon itself. And that's why the volume gets louder and louder and louder and less intelligible. Um, so... When it comes to acoustic panels, you're trying to mitigate those that effect and decrease that specific effect from, from occurring in a room. Uh, so bass traps are going to be going for a similar goal, but, but more designed towards the low end and low mid frequency attenuation. So I hope that helps clarify some of the main differences uh, between acoustic panels and bass traps. If you have any more questions about it, uh, feel free to leave a comment below or fill out a room analysis form. Uh, link below, it can be found on our website and uh, we'll see if we can help you out with that. And until next time, thanks for watching and make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys again soon. Rock on.